Uh, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This is part nine of the How I Retouch Photos Photoshop tutorial series, and we are having so much fun. We're almost done with it. This, I've been walking through every step that I take, generally speaking, when I begin retouching an image and how I get what I get. If you're interested in learning about how we got everything that we've got in here so far, go back and check out the past tutorials. I'm, I'm, let, I'm giving you access to download this photo so you can follow along. I also have other um, uh, actions and gradients, things like that that you can download and work with along the way. Uh, you got to check it all out. It's other in, over in the other parts of the tutorials. I also have an entire course on how to retouch images that I'm selling over on tutvid.com. It covers other stuff about retouching, like retouching food and babies and families and groups, beauty retouching, um, product retouching, things like that. Uh, it's a course. If you pick it up, it helps out. Tutvid.com helps me do more with these videos. And it's just super cool. I like it. Uh, and I like you for doing it. But if not, don't worry. We still got plenty of free tutorials here for you to indulge yourself with. So sharpening. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do with regard to sharpening. The first thing uh, that I want to remind you of is, remember way back in part three of this video tutorial series, we talked about frequency separation. And with the high pass portion of frequency separation, you can apply sharpening to that layer and sharpen the details in a very, very good and very, very powerful and unique way. There are also other ways to work with frequency separation to sharpen your image. We can do that. Um, I don't really want to focus, I don't think, on frequency separation and sharpening in frequency separation. Um, part of me is tempted to do it, but I think I just want to talk about selective sharpening and how I do that. So here's what I normally do. I merge my entire image to a new layer, and check this out, our image is already 1.05 gigabytes in file size, just a single PSD, a single retouched image here, and we're not finished yet. So let's just merge this up to a new layer. Command Shift Option E, that would be Control Shift Alt E on the PC, and with this image, what I want to begin with is kind of the stuff that doesn't need to be sharpened much at all. So I'm going to go into quick mask mode right here, this icon, the hotkey is the letter Q. I'm going to grab my brush tool. I want it to be a large soft edged brush. Uh, opacity should be set to 100. Oh, by the way, you probably want to double click on your quick mask icon and make sure that you're choosing to select uh, or, or color indicates selected areas. That way you're actually painting where the selection will be. Hit OK. And I want to apply just a little bit. Oh, make sure we're in quick mask mode. The letter Q. There we go. We're in quick mask mode. I want to apply a little bit of uh, some kind of tonal adjustment to these buildings. So I'm going to just paint something over them. And you know what? I'll, I'll lump the trees in with that. Um, just, just you know, we'll see if it even looks good at all. It may not, but I just want to show you kind of how this works. So we're going to hit the letter Q. It's going to load that as a selection. I may feather that selection a little bit. Let's go select Modify Feather. Maybe feather it like 150 pixels, something like that. And hit Command or Control J to pop that up onto a new layer. So what we'll name this layer is... Uh, BG hyphen elements, uh, well, element, elements, whatever. Let's go elements. And I'm going to right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. Great. Uh, once it converts to a smart object, which it, you know, will. And we'll shut this layer off. So we'll go back down to the original layer now. We want to sharpen her dress, probably separate from her hair and her hair separate from her skin. So we know we need to make sort of three little selections with quick mask. Let's grab the dress first. Hit the letter Q. Let's make our brush tool a little bit smaller. And I'm going to brush over all of this. Okay, I'm going to select that little bit of the dress there. I don't mind if it's 100% perfect. Um, remember, we're going to, when we create the selection, we're, we are going to feather the selection as well. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't want to be somewhat careful. I and mean, really what I should be doing is zooming in a little bit. So let's uh, zoom in just a kiss here. And uh, let's paint over the dress. The dress, the dress, the dress. All right, again, you don't have to be 100% perfect because we are going to feather this uh, selection and the it's going to cause the sharpening all to sort of fade together almost seamlessly, but also I think work together really well. There, I, I can't remember who I learned this technique from. I, I either saw the video tutorial somebody did online uh, or somebody told me about it, and I just love it so much. It's, it's really a great little technique to use. It can be a little time-consuming, a little annoying. Uh, at times where you just don't feel like doing it, but it works really well. Go ahead and hit the letter Q, load that as a selection, select, modify, feather, and we'll go 150 pixels. Great. We've selected that original layer. Why? Because we're going to Commander Control J, copy, boom, pop that up off of that layer. I'm going to drag it up above BG elements because the dress is above the background elements in the image. So I'm going to say dress, and once again, right click, convert to smart object. Let's see how long it takes to convert this one to a smart object. All right, so now we can shut the dress layer off, go back down to layer one. Let's grab her uh, her skin. So I'm going to go ahead here with the arm. 
you know, now the reason I do this is because the sharpening that we need to apply to the dress can be a little bit chunkier, and in fact probably should be a little chunkier so we can really pull all those lines out of the dress, whereas the sharpening that we're going to apply to her skin, we want it to be a much finer sharpening. And then the sharpening that we apply to the hair, we probably want to have more of a mid-tone punch to help accentuate the shadows and highlights of the hair. That's part of the reason why it's really nice to be able to selectively sharpen uh, all the different parts of your image like this. All right, we got the back of her hand here as well. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Hit the letter Q to load it as a selection. Shift F6 is the hotkey, by the way, for feather a selection. Hit OK at 150 pixels. Great. We got that original layer selected. Command or Control J. We're going to right click. We're going to call this Skin Tones. And Skin Tones technically are actually beneath the dress, but I'm going to place them above the dress because I think that's kind of where they belong. Convert this to a smart object and hit the little eyeball to shut that layer off. Go back to our original layer. Now all we've got to, we got to do is make a rough selection of the hair. Hit the letter Q to enter back into quick mask mode and let's just pick up uh, the hair kind of like so. So the hair selection, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Again, like everything else, it is going to end up getting uh, feathered and things like that. But the, the key factor here is that we're going to apply one particular type of sharpening to the hair. And the hair really is going to be in the foreground. So the hair is going to be all the way up on top of all this stuff. Hit the letter Q, load it as a selection. Shift F6, feather this. You know what, I'm going to feather this just by 100 because it's a smaller overall selection. Hit OK, you can see that. It's definitely a smaller selection. Hit Commander Control J, pop this up onto its own layer. Let's call this hair. We're going to make this a smart object. And by the way, we're making these all smart objects because I'm going to apply smart sharpening to them and I may need to go in and tweak and adjust the sharpening in any one of these elements. All right, we can delete the original background layer. So let's begin here with the background elements. Background elements is going to be pretty fast and easy. We'll know right away if it's going to work or not. Let's go filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And I know with this, I want to crank the radius up. I want a pretty big radius. Um, and amount doesn't really have to be all that high. But I know I want a, a, a rather verbose radius, uh, if you will. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll just quickly preview this. It may take a second to apply the actual smart sharpen. And that's fine. It's a huge image. Like we're at 1.3 gigabytes for the file size. It's rather large. So before, after, mm, I don't know that I see enough of a difference. And by the way, it's almost like a cardinal, uh, a, a, a very bad sin, a, a capital crime, I should say, to not sharpen or not view your sharpened image at 100%. That's a must. Okay, so there's before, there's after. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it's worth keeping. I don't think what it does to the file size is going to be worth it. I'm going to delete the background elements layer. Let's go right to the dress. It was worth checking out anyway. It all depends on how in focus your background is going to be. Obviously, if you're shooting at like F2 and it's just, you know, a crazy, you know, blurred out background, unless you have very defined bokeh, a bokey, bokeh, whatever, um, it's probably not worth really going overboard with the sharpening. All right, so let's go to the dress layer. Let's go filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Now, I know here I, I don't need a radius of 6.4. I know that. Probably just like 2 or 3. Um, let's click here so we can check out what's happening here with our sharpening. Um, you can see maybe maybe 150 uh, pixel feather was a little, little extreme for our case here. Uh, let's boost the actual amount to about 100. Uh, let's go preview. There, so there's before sharpening. And there is after sharpening. Give it a second. There's after sharpening. A little bit too much, I think. Let's take it down to like 80. Uh, and maybe the radius should drop to maybe 2.2, 2.3. Let's hit OK. Let's see what this looks like. Um, and what we can do, because all of this, by the way, because all this sharpening is up on its own layer, we can always, if we just decide that that is way too extreme, you can always just reduce the opacity a little bit and just fade it back together with the original image. All right, let's go to the skin tones. Now here, this is very important. We're going to zoom actually beyond 100% here because I want to see how well we can pick out all these individual pores and everything that we see here on her skin, you know, her eyelashes, hairs in her eyebrows, things like that. This is where this is going to become, you know, it's going to be money if we can really pull that out. So we need to reduce the radius to something like 1, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, something like that, and maybe boost the amount to, uh, to 100, 115. Okay, so that's a, that's a bit much. Uh, let's, let's actually back the radius down a little bit, but keep kind of that high. Yeah, see, like 120 pixels, radius is 0 0.8. Whew, that is, that's beautiful. That's great. Uh, let's just do a quick before and after here. Once it applies the Smart Sharpen, you can see there's before, there's after. Very subtle, but this is the importance, like I said, of working at 100, 200, 300% when you are uh, doing sharpening. That just gives it such a great, 
you know, it just, it, it's like the snap. It's the last little bit that just says, yes, like the great image. Uh, you really want it to be sharp. All right, let's uh, do the hair now. So the hair, we want to sort of find a happy medium between that that very detail-oriented sharpness that we applied to the skin and kind of the chunkier uh, sharpness that we applied to the dress to pull out some of the, the details in the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go filter, smart, sharpen, and I might try to just keep the 120%, boost the radius, and know that I just have to reduce the opacity of the hair layer. So let's take this up to like 2.5 or so. Uh, for the hair. Let's see what we got. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's bringing out a lot of detail in the hair. Let's just roll with that. Um, you're going to see here when it applies it, uh, I'll shut it off. There's before, there's after. So, I mean, it really brings out detail in a lot of the small hairs. It's a little bit too, it's a little too over the top, but I don't think it really needs to come down a huge, huge amount. Let's take it down to, you know, 65, 70, something like that. Cool. So that's how I like to do sharpening in Photoshop. I like to break it down layer by layer and adjust and, and apply the, the, the sharpening that I think is best for each individual element in the image. So, for sharpening in Photoshop and using the high pass layer, well, actually, no, we didn't really use a high pass layer. What am I thinking? You can use a high pass layer for an entire global uh, layer of sharpening, but we're not doing that here for the not high pass layer, for instead the breaking it down in individual layers and using smart sharpen. That's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Today's moment of brilliance is brought to us by the amazing Pablo Picasso. And he says, every child is an artist. The trick is to remain an artist after you've grown up or become an adult, or I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Think outside the box. That's what kids do that adults, we as adults don't like to do, or even some of us as teenagers. We start thinking about paying the bills or buying our first car or whatever it is, buying our first house and we stop thinking like a child in terms of being creative and exploring things that seem ridiculous. Out of that ridiculousness, amazingness is born. So don't stop being a child in terms of being creative and being an artist. That's Pablo Picasso. Make sure you hit the like button for this video. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And up here, you can click this little link and you can sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you a course, 30 tips and tricks on how you can use Photoshop much faster. You can also follow me on Snapchat, on Twitter, on Instagram, and also Facebook. I almost forgot one of them there. But until the next video, guys, I will see you later.